Let's talk about uh, ionic solids and the structures that they have. Uh, in general, there's normally considered to be three basic types uh, that are the simple cubic, the body-centered cubic, and the face-centered cubic. So these are the simple cubic structures, all of these guys. And there's a few things we need to know about them, and that's about it for this particular class. So, for example, the first thing we might want to look at is just generally what they look like. If we look at the simple cubic, it really is just atoms situated at the corners of a cube. For a body-centered, it's the same eight atoms at the corners of a cube, plus another one that's located in the center. And then finally, there's the body centered, or the face centered right here. And here we've got the same situation with everything located at the corners. But then there's a couple others that are on the face of the cube. So these are essentially where you'd find the dots on a die. If you're rolling a, a die, some dice, the dots are on the face. That's where we'd find an atom. So if we look at that, um, by the way, this is this representation and this row of, of, of the figures, they aren't very realistic. This is a much better look right here because it actually shows that the atoms are just, they're nuclei surrounded by electrons, uh, and therefore the electrons take up a volume, the whole thing takes up a volume. So a better picture, once again, is right here in this row. Or even in this row here, we're getting a better view as well. So as we look at these, um, and I'll erase real quickly, uh, as we take a quick look at them, the first thing we want to ask ourselves is, uh, how many atoms are in each of these cubic uh, structures. So if I look at the simple cubic right here, the basic simple cubic structure, it looks as though there's eight atoms there that are somehow connected to this cube. But the question that we really want to ask is how many are on the inside of the cube? How many are in the actual cube? So we're going to look down here at this picture, and it's going to help us out. Uh, this portion right here is the amount of one atom that is actually within this cube. And that happens to be one-eighth. One-eighth of an atom. So even though we can't chop up an atom into eighths, only one-eighth of the atom is in this particular part of the cube. Um, there would be repeating structures here, by the way, so that the cube would kind of extend out uh, and below. And so you'd end up with another cube kind of over here uh, attached to it. The, Poor drawing on my part, but that's okay. Hopefully you'll get the picture. So it's a repeating structure. They call it a lattice. So there's one-eighth. Anytime we have one of these at the corner, that's one-eighth of an atom. And, of course, there's how many how many, Q, how many atoms on the corners? Well, it's eight corners times one-eighth. So in the simple cubic, that means there's one total atom. One total atom in the cubic, in the simple cubic. So I'll put the word simple there. Sound good? All right. Let's move on to the body centered, because the body centered really is quite easy to figure out. It's the same answer we had before, except now there's an extra atom in the center. It's right here. This one right here that I'm kind of highlighting as best I can. That one right there is in the center. That's the entire atom is within this cube. Therefore, we've got one from the one-eighth plus one in the center. There's two atoms inside here. Finally, if we look at the face-centered cubic, there's these guys that are kind of sitting here. And the question is, how much of that atom is in there? Well, it's on the face. So if I kind of look at a sideways, if I rotate it a little bit and I look at the side, here's the whole atom. And as we see, this face cuts it in half. So here's one half. Here's one half. So for a face-centered cubic, for face-centered, we have the corners again. That's one. Plus, there's how many faces? Six times one half. That's equal to one plus three is equal to four atoms. So there's four atoms inside. Uh, that doesn't seem like it's all that important, but it allows us to answer some questions uh, about the um, molecular formula of a crystal. For example, if I look at this example from your book, um, this one says that shown here is a crystal. Uh, and the orange balls are atom A, the black balls are atom B. So these are the A's, these are the B's. And the question is, how many 
Okay, how many are in here? This is kind of what we're asking right here. What's the chemical formula? So let's do that. To do the chemical formula, we have to count out how many of each atom type is in there. So the orange, um, we can we have to figure out what shape do they take. Do they tape the simple cubic, the face-centered cubic, or the body-centered? So if we take a look, this one right here, and this one right here, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one in the back, those are all, all six of those are on the face, while well, I'll put an X over all these that are on the corners. So we've got face-centered. If there's face-centered, that means there's a total of four A's here. Hopefully everyone can see that. I'll clear this up a little bit. And this figure should be in your book. It's one of your concept checks right out of the book. And if we look carefully, there's one, two, three, four of these of these B's and they are inside the cube. They're all within the center of the cube. And so there's four B's. And so if we think about it, the structure of this guy, the answer to this is there's A4, B4, or more simply, because this is probably some ionic substance, if it's ionic, it would be AB would be the molecular formula for this unit cell. That's what this is called, a unit cell. Uh, just for fun, if you look carefully at these B's, they are in the shape of what's called a tetrahedron. There's one there, one kind of going back there, and then these two right there. Um, so you may hear, if you take more chemistry courses, that these B atoms are filling the tetrahedral holes of one of these cubic cells. Not important for this class, it's a little bit above and beyond, but at least uh, you've now seen it in case you move on in the future. So we know the formula for this guy. The formula is AB. We may need that later. So let's go back up to here and take a look at our at our cubes again and answer a different question. The question being, how do people know anything about these? Well, there's a method called x-ray diffraction, which I recommend you look at the ThinkWell videos on the EduSpace if you'd like to learn about that in detail. But the key thing is the the, the x-ray diffraction technique will allow us to determine the length along the edge of one of these cubes. Any cube, we can get the edge. So we can measure that length, and let's call it A. And since these are cubes, all the edges are the same. Uh, not all structures are cubic, so we'd have to have, we'd get different values for that. So if I look at this edge, or this edge, or this edge, it's A, A, or A, however we look at it. So then, all we have to do is, if we know that, if we can get that experimentally, so x-ray diffraction, this technique um, allows us to determine A. And so A is called the edge length. And it's fairly straightforward. It's some kind of length, normally given in picometers, you know, some very small length like that, or angstroms, potentially. So let's look at the cubic one and see if we can figure out, just from what we know, if someone gave us the experimental x-ray diffraction pattern and we figured out what the edge length was, could we figure out anything about the atom? And the answer is sure. So if we look carefully along this edge, as I said before, this is not the best picture, but along this edge, there is... Um, we know that length, and if we know that length, we can also look at the real picture here and take a look down at the bottom, okay, or even right here, I'm going to draw the face right on this guy. So this square, this cube that's here, I've just put down there. And if you look carefully, hopefully you'll be able to see this, but there are two total atoms that kind of cross that. So... If I look at those two, and I've switched my programs a bit, if I look at my two, then what I notice is this distance is half the edge length right here, and there's two of these distances, and this distance is the radius of the atom. That means that two of the radii are equal to the edge length, right? Because R plus R equals the whole length. So that means if I know the edge length, the radius of this atom is the edge length divided by 2. 
that's pretty interesting information. This means using X-ray diffraction for crystalline structure, we can figure out the average atomic radius of this of the atom. Fantastic. Let's look at instead the face-centered cubic. So this is the picture we're going to come back to just to bring you up to speed again. It touches along the face, along the face, not along the edge. Notice right down here, there is no touching along this edge where I'm highlighting. No touching. Therefore, we, we, we don't know that information. So the shape is determined by, instead, this touching along the edge from one edge of the one diagonal edge over to this diagonal. So there we go. What we do know from experiment is this length is called A. And we also know that this length is called A. Luckily for us, there's a guy back in the Greek times who figured out how to find this distance here, this diagonal distance, found that that distance squared is equal to A squared plus, in this case, A squared. Or D squared is equal to 2a squared. But if I look carefully at this diagonal, not only is it equal to 2a squared, it's equal to one radius, another radius, another radius, and another radius. One, two, three, four radii. That means that if the distance is equal to four radii, then I can put these two together and say, aha, this tells me the distance is equal to the square root of 2 times a. So that means that 4 radii is equal to the square root of 2 times a, or the radius is the square root of 2 times the edge length divided by 4. So this is what you would get if you, were, if you had a face-centered cubic crystal and you needed to determine the uh, atomic radius. You could do it in this, in this way. So our last one to play with would be body-centered. Now, body-centered isn't quite as easy to do because we're not used to looking at things necessarily in three dimensions. So just so you know, there's a Pythagorean theorem that works this way, where we would go along one edge, up another edge, and as long as we map out all three dimensions, the diagonal from this point to this point, which is where we touch, where we touch, that diagonal, Okay, so that diagonal across, which is where all these atoms touch. Once again, there's four radii is equal to the diagonal. It's the same as before for the diagonal. And in this case, the diagonal squared is equal to each of the edges squared. So there's an A, an A, and an A. So that's A squared plus A squared plus A squared. Or D squared is equal to 3A squared. That means the diagonal is equal to the square root of 3 times a, which is also equal to 4 radii. Therefore, a radius is equal to the square root of 3 times a over 4. And this is for a body-centered, a BCC, a body-centered cubic crystal. Well, that's it. We can now use this, if we wanted to, to figure out, um, if we had some information like this one, we could figure out the atomic radius of these unknown atoms, A, maybe match those up to experimentally known, experimentally known uh, data, and in doing so, um, identifying the actual chemical that makes up this substance.